So I'm still amazed that there are people that yeah. come yeah. out here. I haven't seen this many <laughs> Commodore 64s um, in one place in a very long time. Um, and it's kind of awesome. Although I must say, that's the wrong font. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but you, it's right on your, on your t-shirt. Thank, okay. thank you. Um, but anybody have any questions? Any things you've wondered about? Uh, turn the projector off. Uh, go ahead and turn, turn the projector off. Yeah, uh, and the answer to your question is yes, I do. We were talking at our last meeting about how Jack came up with the name Commodore, and I think you've heard various versions. I do have So the story he told is impossible. Um, he said that he wanted to name the company General, but that was taken, uh, General Electric and other, and other such things. And that he was in a cab in Berlin, and a car cut him off and stopped, the cab had to stop short, and it was an Opel Commodore. Okay. And that car didn't come out until after he had made that decision. <laughs> so I have no idea where the name came from, and apparently he didn't remember. <laughs> I, I also heard this story, he wanted General, and it was taken. And so was Admiral, so he went to Commodore. But, but this was during type, type, uh, calculators? Or type no, typewriters. Typewriters, <laughs> type yeah. yeah. So this would have been 1958. Right. By the way, the way Leonard and I met was at the Commodore 64 anniversary, um, which had a rare appearance by Jack you know, and, and we ran into each other. And he did, he told all the stories. I, I had been a teletype repairman, and he had been a typewriter repairman, <laughs> yeah. both in the service, and I had no. So. Um, well, here, I, I've got a question for you. Yes, sir. So, when we get to the CES show, the baby five, right. we arrive. Um, one of the things we noticed is we didn't have any hotel room reservations. <laughs> so, I, uh, I, I do what you do. You, I grabbed the, the uh, Saul Davidson was the CEO, the, the president at the time. I grabbed the secretary who's got, you know, put a credit card in her hand. I walked the credit card, still in her hand, up to the counter and, uh, you know, get a room for three of the nights. But did you get your hotel room canceled? Um, we left. Yeah. So <laughs> you you were at the you were at the Stardust, right? Um, at the uh, eighty five CDS. Yeah. Because um, I'm standing next to the guy who canceled your reservations. Yeah. Well, <laughs> when, <laughs> when, so uh, contrary to the common stories, um, Dad quit at CES. It wasn't at. Oh. You know, wasn't at the board meeting. Oh. He got the board meeting a month later. <laughs> right. Um, so he quit and we left. So I'm talking about the ones where you were with the tar. Oh, the, oh, yeah. The the one in in summer of '85. Yeah. Um, the, the because the January. I, the first time I talked with with Jack right. you know, was okay. at the uh, uh, the first CES where he was there with the tar. Okay. And we were there. And I was there with 128. That was with, that was the one with the big billboard. Welcome to Atari Country. Um, it's the one, I have a picture. It's the one that has a big picture of a Commodore ship. Oh. Same thing. Oh. <laughs> okay. So yeah, we, we had ours that looked like a ship. But but that year we got there and our hotel rooms were canceled, and we were told they were done by Atari. And I hope it was because I stood next to I saw Yash Terkler standing next to Pat McAllister. Right. They were canceling your hotel rooms at the Stardust. That, 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 that would have that would have been unkind. You guys, let's let we, we Se seems unlikely. I'm pretty sure we were staying at the Sands. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It, it still existed. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. <laughs> but, and, and the no one would stuff. any. No one would ever do anything nasty like that. No. Well, that wasn't you guys in white car driving around in our black cars. No. <laughs> so, I have a question about the CS. Michael Tomczyk told me that uh, he made bits. Did you say Tomczyk? To yeah, the pronunciation for nothing Mike. Michael Tomczyk Okay, says. thank you. Oh. <laughs> uh, except his name. Okay. Uh, <laughs> was there, was there like a culture of a boy call demo in 8-bit systems as well for the CES? Did, was there ever like a demo with a bouncing ball or something like that before the media? Because I have Are you talking about the Amiga? I don't, I don't no, no, not Amiga. Not I, don't, I, don't, I do not remember one. Okay. 
uh, for the for the Governor 64. I don't. Any 8-bit systems where it would have been cool to show a ball or something? I, I, I do not remember. Okay. Yes. Um, Tom Check tells lots of interesting stories. <laughs> he, um, he did the VIX-20. So, uh, I'm trying to remember what year it was. It was probably about five years ago. A film crew came out to visit Dad to mm -hmm. interview him for a uh, documentary, which is supposed to come out later this year. Oh, wow. Um, and at one point, the interviewer asks him about this, quote, famous meeting in London where the VIC-20 was designed. And Dad turns to me and goes, <laughs> um, because that was the meeting where Mike Tomczyk claims to have specify what the machine should do and got input from all of the people and laid out everything in the system. Um, and the meeting never occurred. The machine was designed six months earlier and after it was done was the first time Tom Check saw one. Um, and I know this because I was at the meeting where we showed it to the marketing people and Mike was sitting next to me, and he kept going, how does that work? What, what's that for? It was really, and, and, it's reading, morning, and reading the, the story, I just, just cracked up. But people's memories are fallible, um, and some are more fallible than others. <laughs> <laughs> my first year, I just assumed, my first year of college, I just assumed that I would work for Tom Burr in the summer. Um, so I just, you know, first day after school ended, um, you know, I was ready to go to work dad. And he's like, what are you, what, why are you get in the car? Well, I assume I'm going to be working for you over the summer. Why? Because I always did. Well, so, all right, fine, come with me. Um, and we went, we went to the office and, um, went to the people that were designing the calculators at the time um, and said to the, the guy in charge of the calculator thing, this is my son Leonard, have him do something useful. <laughs> um, and that was all, that was the instructions I got for the summer. Um, and I designed calculators and did all sorts of wonderful things, it was, it was really cool. The next year I thought, okay, he doesn't want me to work for him during the summer. So I went and got a summer job at um, the Ames Research Center, um, doing really exciting stuff. I was counting craters on Mars. Was really, really great. Um, and when I didn't get in the car that first day, I said, so where are you going? I'm going to, I got a job at, at the Ames Research Center. What did you do that for? <laughs> So I, I worked for him for summers after that. We didn't have to discuss it in advance. <laughs> well, yeah. So I, I heard a lot of versions, and as you said, people's memories are fallible. Of why Atari did not sell the NES, and I'm curious: were you involved in that? Do you know what version? Was there ever a chance of it? I do not believe there was ever a chance of it. I was not involved at all. Okay. Um, for the first six months and almost year and a half of um, Atari. Okay. Uh, we were really, really, really busy okay. working on the SD. Okay. Uh, and anything else we ignored. Okay. Uh, uh, going from design concept to working prototype in cases at CES in six months, that's hard. Took some effort. <laughs> um, and paying attention to little things like Nintendo right. uh, was not anything we... Uh, Plus, so when the, some of the engineers got there, they had just left Commodore, they arrived to have their, uh, their trailers um, padlocked by the FBI. Uh -huh. they, Doug Rand, yeah. Uh, uh -huh. who, who made the Wall Street Journal front page good for Doug. <laughs> Yet yeah, um, there was a monstrous pissing match it was. Uh, oh, between Commodore and Amiga and Atari and all sorts of oh, stuff. Wow. 
with lawsuits going back and forth. And it was, it was, uh, they admitted they had stuck stuff in the, uh, taken the whole design of the Z80 and stuffed it in the uh, shredder before leaving and then took the mag tapes with them. They admitted that part. So uh, that's what it started on. It, 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 was, it was bizarre. Um, now, so the last, you got, I'm sorry, I have one question. Do you remember when the, the first time you really think deeply about Nikola Tesla? Uh, about Nikola Tesla? Yes, the, the uh, moment you... I, uh, no, I certainly was familiar with him because of the Tesla and the, and the pump. And right? uh, the following question, but do you no. think do you think your father once kind of got into thinking about Nikola Tesla? Uh, my guess is he would not would not have recognized the name. Okay, but then, but then Nikola Tesla work wasn't so recognized, right? And my father was a profoundly uninterested in technology person. <laughs> this, this will come as a shock to some of you. A, a uh, no, it, who ran a computer company better than. Yeah, um, so the the first computer system that my father was comfortable using was an Apple iPad. Um, and just because it was intuitive and we could do things, but completely illiterate on computers. Uh, but unlike you, you are... I'm a nerd. Thank you. I am very, very much a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yes, really. Were you involved very much with CES uh, in the late 80s, mid 80s, to early 90s? Uh, with Atari. So, with Atari. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I was in this town uh, many times. Um, and like Bill, uh, except at the software end instead of the hardware end, you would get a piece of, of uh, hardware to demo, and you had to write a demo. Um, and you didn't get the hardware till the night before the show opened. Um, <laughs> like, like meeting John Fagan's five yeah. minutes before. Uh, the, I think the worst one of those for me was when that happened in Hanover. So I got the, the prototype of the hardware um, at 3 in the morning, Hanover time. And I had just flown over and I had to write code for hardware that didn't work the way it was specified. Um, prior to a show, bad things happen. Do you have a question? Yeah, so what was your favorite, while working at Commodore, and after the release of 64, what was your favorite uh, Commodore 64? My favorite Commodore 64? If you had one. Um, what did you find yourself playing most of them? Oh, I'm trying to remember the name. Damn it. Um, Maybe wow. in that box. Um, <laughs> a, uh, a maze that you jump through. Jump in? Probably. Sounds right. Oh, yeah. um, and the most amazing piece of software that I remember well for the Commodore 64 was, of course, anything written by Jeff Minter. <laughs> uh, just awesome stuff. I have a question. Yes. So you said then you guys, your dad left at CES of, it would have been 84 then. Yeah. So that picture I have of him showing the, the two computers. Yeah, was at that show. Right. But then, yeah. I mean, so that really is the cusp of him leaving when like a couple days later he's gone. Yeah. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that was a very strange show. And, and it, yes, and they didn't tell us right away, you know, so we, we, we felt a bump. And then only started figuring out as they tried out different rumors on us to see which ones would you know, pass muster. Yeah, so, so three things happened at the same time. And I guess you guys are the first people to, to hear this. Because um, everyone involved is now dead. So it's okay. Um, so Commodore passed a billion dollars in sales um, that preceding 12 months. Right. It was the 25th anniversary of Commodore as a company. So 1984 started in 59. Um, 
And so there was a big party. And something that sounds completely unrelated, um, a new version of the Corvette came out that year. And my dad loved it. <laughs> Thought it was just awesome. So my two brothers and I um, bought him one. And uh, my younger brother took him around to um, Chevy showrooms to figure out exactly what interior and style, everything else he wanted. And then bought that car. And Sam and Gary drove it up to Vegas. And at a low point um, in CES, Gary had figured some reason to take Dad out the front entrance of the hotel. And Dad goes, that's the car. That's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> and he walks over to it, and he walks around, he's at the right interior, it's the right color, and this is this perfect, and, and, and Gary reaches into his pocket, hands in the keys. Which oh. <laughs> awesome. And then the next day, um, he had a meeting with Irving Gould, um, and Irving was using um, company assets like they were owned, his own. Like the jet? Like the jet. And Dad didn't like that and said that was wrong and said, you can't do that while I'm president. And Irving said, goodbye. So he left, um, went back to his room, got my mom, they packed and hopped in the car and drove up. Huh. So it was convenient that the home, that the car was there. <laughs> Otherwise, we didn't have plane reservations. You guys just heard it for the first time publicly. <laughs> he's, he's told some CBM family before. Yeah, this, this is the last time. But uh, yeah, everyone involved is is no longer with us. So. They, uh, and and then they tried rumors on us, like saying, "Well, we just hit a billion, but we felt he couldn't take us to ten billion." We went, what? No, he could he grew it to this. You know, so they would try different things. One one was that they wouldn't promote you to like. Be a vice president. That was one of the rumors they tried on us. Yeah, well, given that I didn't actually work for right. Hunger at the time, right. that was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> management, you know, was just. Yeah, um, yeah the, the rumor, the, the story I heard many times was that um, Dad wanted his sons to run the company, right. and we were obviously incompetent. Uh, so we couldn't do that, so they had to get rid of him. Yeah. <laughs> and meanwhile, Sam was running Commodore Tokyo. Several, several years at that time. Yeah, he was running Commodore Japan and, and in fact continued to do it for a couple of months after Dad left. Yes, that's part of my story, is actually. Is. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so the, what, the story you just told, that transpired in 1984. Yeah, okay. in 84. So then the Commodore LCD with the, uh, with, the, with the modular phone port in the side, right. what year was that? 85. 85. So they're back as Atari by now. Okay. But I'm over on the I need to show you this. Later. Okay. Any other Leonard, what is your opinion of these Brian Bagnall books here? I haven't read them. Oh, you haven't? He I, signed I, some, but <laughs> I, I have not read them. I was wondering if they are accurate or not. So. Um, nothing is accurate. Oh. <laughs> um, I, I actually spent um, about a decade um, bashing my head against the California Department of Education, okay. trying to convince them of a really silly idea, which is that textbooks need to be accurate. If textbooks aren't accurate, there's no way those are. Um, I did talk to Brian a couple of times, um, so hopefully what is in there, I think there's a quote from me on the back, um, which I didn't know until I saw a picture somewhere. Um, so hopefully the questions he asked me I answered correctly and he transcribed what I said correctly, but I, I don't know. And, and Leonard's corrected some of the things I misspoke on or said just completely wrong, so as he said in your memory. Since they mentioned the book, uh, and it, he seems to think that your father was obsessed with keeping the Japanese out of the American market. Did you say that was accurate? No, no. no that is not accurate. He was uh -huh. obsessed with not having successful competition. He didn't care whether it was the Japanese or anybody else. I believe he understood that he needed Japan and Germany to be the, what he was. Yeah. And other people weren't in Japan, 
and here we have an office full of speaking Japanese speaking people, and that was our angle and our edge, you know, for mass production. One of the examples he gives is uh, your father had a chance to lock in the licensing rights for Donkey Kong early before anyone else in the United States, and at the last second he bailed. Can't imagine how that's true. Well, the last second he bailed out of the deal because he was afraid that would give them bigger can't, foothold. Can't imagine how that's true. Donkey Kong was on the Atari. Yes, that was the book. even before that. He was going to be the first one, according to the book. Nah. I, my understanding is your dad wasn't obsessed with it. Didn't, the games wasn't the 64 for him. It was yeah. educational and the stuff you could do with it. That's, right. that's what drove his yeah. interest in the 64. So I, I couldn't believe he's having... So it was completely, it was, you know, the whole power for the masses, not the classes yeah. thing. Yeah. So you, you've probably heard that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any truth to the fact that, or not, maybe not a fact, uh, Commodore had the opportunity to purchase Apple early on? Yeah. None whatsoever. Oh, I thought that was in the anniversary. We talked about his talks with Steve Jobs. Yeah, so um, Steve won in 45, and, you, you, and uh, Jack Tremiel said on stage something about an offer of 10,000. And, and kind of no, so the, money from there on. the, the, uh, the what what happened? And you can go back and that that talk is on the web, mm -hmm. so you can listen yep. to yep. it. Um, I, it was an hour long. I don't remember everything he said, but basically at, at one point, while the pet was being designed, um, Jobs and I don't remember if was was there or not, came in to talk to Commodore about marketing the Apple computer. Mm. And um, Dad said, we're, we've got our own. Uh, we're going to make one as well. Uh, but if you're using our processor, here are some samples. But good luck. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Commodore uh, Japan was in the news recently because a certain rapper of Nintendo who recently passed away used to record a few games for it. What happened to Commodore Japan? I have no idea. So when. When we left Commodore in um, January of 84 um, and dove pretty quickly into Atari, uh, my direct association with Commodore was non-existent. So Bill will know a lot more about it than I, uh, but uh, no idea. It, and it gets I assume they did good engineering because they always did. And there's a movie out called uh, um, by Dave Haney called uh, Deathbed Virgil Vigil. I, I won't even watch it because it's too sad. You know. So the life after me, I, I did the same thing. It's like I, I don't need to hear about this coming apart. You know, because this had been Camelot when I've been there. Yeah, watch, watching Commodore slowly sort of shrivel up and die yeah, was, was yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah. Hold it, hold it, what the hell is that shit? It's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I am all out of gum.